New Chief of Staff, Ryan Priebus, thank you for joining us this morning. Congratulations on the new job. What are the three most important things you want to accomplish in the White House in the first 100 days? Well, the most important things are the three things that he outlined, that President-elect Trump outlined in uh, the campaign, uh, getting his arms around our foreign policy and our position around the world, obviously dealing with our immigration issues and, and, and concentrating on Obamacare, and I'll, I'll just add one more, uh, tax reform. So I, I think we have an opportunity to do all of those things, given the fact that we've got the House and the Senate, uh, and we have an eager Congress ready to get work done. There has been some reaction, though, to the pick of Steve Bannon as the chief strategist inside the White House. I have a couple questions about that. In the press release yesterday, it said you were going to be equal partners with Mr. Bannon. How exactly is that going to work? Who's in charge? Well, I mean, the White House chief of staff is always generally responsible for the day-to-day operation of the White House. It's a, it's, it's, it's an operations role, but it's also an advisory role to the president. You know, the way that we've operated the last few months is Steve and I have formed a great partnership in advising President-elect Trump together. Um, and, and that's what it really is, 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 is talking to him together, um, getting ourselves on the same page. It seemed to work very well on the campaign. I think you've seen especially uh, over the last few months that Donald Trump's been very disciplined and he's also been uh, very comfortable and on message and clear minded and look what happened on Tuesday I mean, it was an electoral landslide um, and the American people agreed that that Donald Trump's vision for America is what this country has been waiting for uh, and it was one of the most political historical wins uh, in modern history. The Electoral College, significant lead in the Electoral College, as, as you know, he lost the popular vote. But I want to ask another question about Mr. Bannon. Been a yeah, strong... but George, but look, can I just, can I say something about that? Look, un unfortunately or fortunately, this is not a, this is an election that takes place in about 12 states. If Donald Trump wanted to spend three day, you know, three months in California, New York, he would have won the popular vote. So he played the exact strategy that a smart person would play in the 12 states that mattered, and he won significantly. So I get the obsession over the popular vote, but that's really not what this election was all about. No question he won the presidency fair and square. I was just pointing out that fact. But let me ask that question about Mr. Bannon. As you know, there's been a strong reaction. The Anti-Defamation League says he is hostile to core American values. You have the top, uh, top aide to Senate Democratic leader Harry Reid saying this signals that white supremacists will, will be represented at the highest levels of the Trump White House. How do you respond to that? Well, look, first of all, I don't know where they're coming from. I and mean, that's, the, that's not the Steve Bannon that I know. I, I have sat with him uh, for months. I have never, ever one time experienced that. And well, they're looking I, at the Breitbart website, I think. These people are taking it way too far. What I would say, okay, okay look, uh, what, what I would say is you have to look at the person. I think you have to get to know the person. And I think if people understood that we have a, a naval officer, a Harvard Business School, London School of Economics, this is a very, very smart person who's serving as a senior counsel to the president. I mean, um, I, I think you're going to be a lot of announcements of a lot of people, but I, I find him not to be uh, the way that he's being accused. I find him to be the opposite, and I think people need to, to give people time and give people an opportunity and not make judgments. Don't judge people based on what other people say. Finally, the Wall Street Journal is reporting this morning that, that Mr. Trump and his staff seemed surprised by the scope of the job when they went and visited President Obama at the White House, and that President Obama plans to spend more time with him than presidents typically do because he thinks Trump needs more guidance. Did you see that? And does, Trump, does Mr. Trump want that kind of additional counsel? from President Obama? Um, well, first of all, they had a great meeting, and I think that they were impressed with each other, that President-elect Trump was very impressed and very pleased with their meeting. I didn't see that, and I wasn't there, to tell you the truth, and I haven't heard those things. What I, what I see is a President-elect that, that is getting prepared. I see a staff uh, in New York that is very busy doing the best job that they can for the American people. And I see President-elect Trump being very calm and, and cool and collected and prepared to lead the American people. And the President-elect will be making more announcements this week? 
It, it, it could be this week. It could be next week. But they're they are working very diligently on transition. Uh, it is, as you know, because you've been there, George. It is a ton of work, but. It's work that, that has to get done, and it will get done, and will lead for every American in this country. And I, I predict that in, in, in 20 and 30 years, they will write books about this president uh, and how well he did and how he followed through with his promises and that the American people loved the job that President-elect Trump did. Ryan's previous big new job. Congratulations again.